How's it going, everyone? Sean here from Raw Technique Studios. The website is hiphopaudioschool.com. If you need mixing, courses, templates, any of that stuff, check out hiphopaudioschool.com. All right, so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and do some routing. I have a video that's been pretty popular about routing audio in Pro Tools. I wanna remake it here to show you what I currently use on a regular basis. I don't do a couple things that are in that video. I kind of simplified my routing, so it's just super straightforward. This video is not gonna be super long because my routing is super easy to follow. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm gonna create a couple tracks here. So Shift Command N. I'm gonna start with, let's say we have uh, three vocal tracks. So these are gonna be mono uh, vocal tracks here. And then let's say we also have a stereo uh, audio track for our beat and we'll start with just that so something simple so the stereo track which is down here I'm gonna put it up to the top because that's usually where I would put my beat so let's just say this is a beat and then these tracks here these will be say my vocals and I'm going to color them a different color I highlight all three of them here you can see that they're highlighted and then just double click on the left side there where the color is and then you can select whatever color you want. Let's go with the yellow for the vocals. And I can rename it. I'm gonna say Vox1. Hold down Command and then hit Down and then go to the next one. This is gonna be Vox2. Command Down and Vox3. All right, so we have three vocal tracks and a beat, which is a stereo track. Now, what I like to do is create a couple aux tracks here, and usually I do these as I'm mixing, but since I'm showing you without any audio in the session, then I'm simply gonna just make them now because there's nothing to wait for. So shift command N, bring up the new track menu. I'm gonna go with a stereo aux input, and I wanna do, let's say two of them for this one. So one for reverb, one for delay. Those are my most commonly used effects. If you have other effects that you wanna do, that you want to blend in, then you could do that as well. You just create more aux tracks. Uh, this is to blend an effect. So with a delay, you have it 100% on the mix of the delay. So that's the full effect. And then you use a send or you're bussing out to this aux track to blend how much of the delay you want in there. So do you want a little bit to where you barely hear it or do you want it really loud in there? And you just adjust it with that knob right there. Another way to do it is on the audio track itself and you use the mix knob to say how much delay do I want. Mix at 10% where it's just a little bit or mix at 100% where it's the entire thing which you wouldn't want to do on the actual track but that's how far you could go. So I like to do it this way, creating aux tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter and we have these aux tracks. Something I do on my aux tracks is solo safe. The reason for this is if I solo out a vocal track to hear it, I still wanna hear the effect that I'm sending to as well. So to be able to do that, you're gonna go ahead and hit the command key and press the solo button. It'll gray it out and that's called solo safe. So I'm gonna do that to both of these here. I'm gonna name this one, it's gonna be my delay. And you could name the second one, I'm gonna say reverb here. And you can name them whatever you want, but this is what I usually name them. So to set this up, I'm simply going to create a new input and I need to go to a bus, go to the menu, and just select a bus that's free. So this is stereo, so it has to be um, 3334 or 3536, so it's two channels. And let's just say 2122. I'm gonna right click, rename, and this is gonna be delay. The reason I go through the whole uh, trouble of naming things and all that, it just makes it easier down the line, if you end up getting uh, a bunch of tracks in the session and you want to find something, trying to remember that bus 29 or bus 21 and 22, whatever it is, trying to remember that that's your delay is a lot harder than just simply renaming it delay and having it like that. So when you look for it, it just pops up as what you're looking for, which is delay. So I'm gonna rename this one here after I set it up. So let's say 2324 and right click rename and this will be reverb. All right, so delay, reverb, set up, at least the aux tracks are. Now, we would have to put actual plugins on there to get the delay and the reverb, so for delay, my go-to 
uh, delay unit will be H delay by Waves. Absolutely love it. Use it all the time. If I'm going to reach for a delay, it's going to be this one. So it's the default is like that. I have some presets that I already use. So let's say we're doing a quarter note. These are my presets here. If you want to copy them, go for it. I just like to filter out some of the lows and the highs. And then I have lo-fi on, and that's about it. So you could adjust the feedback, meaning how much do you want it to repeat. And then you could adjust the delay if you want. I have it set to quarter notes, or you could do eighth notes if you want it faster, or you could do uh, half notes if you want it slower. Um, I don't do this very often, the D or the T, because that's like a triplet, and I don't want it to be a triplet. I want it to be on time with an actual half note. So that's what I go there, usually do there. Ping pong is going to be like a left to right type of thing, but that's with delay. Um, and that's how I like to have it set up. So also for the tempo of the song, you're gonna to wanna to have the tempo of whatever the beat is. So if your beat is 120 BPM, then it, the session most likely is already defaulted to that. But say your beat is uh, 95. So I could switch it here, hit enter, and my whole session switches over to 95. All right, so if you don't see this up here, right click, and this is going to be your MIDI controls. See if I uncheck that, it goes away. If I check it, it comes back up. So that's one way to easily change your tempo of your session. All right, so let's set up a reverb unit. I'll just throw on one that I like, and that's gonna be the Valhalla Vintage Ver Verb. And you could mess with the settings, whatever settings you want there. Um, but let's say that's the setting I want. All right, so now we have our vocals and some reverb and delay, and we have our beat. Now, how do we get our vocals to send into these reverbs and delays? It's as simple as going to the sends right here. You're just gonna click on it, go to bus, go to the menu, and then I already renamed it delay and reverb, so this makes it really easy to find, so that's why I do it. So I'm gonna say I want some delay on here. How much delay do I want? Well, I could turn it up, and typically, if I want it to stand out in the song, minus five is one uh, like default I like to go to if I really want to hear the delay. If I want it very light in the background, then it depends on the song, but I'll go back it off maybe minus 20 or something like that. So it just depends on the song and how loud you want the delay to be. You could also automate your delays and do all kinds of fun stuff with it. So let's say, for example, you want to automate it go to where it says waveform on your track, go to send delay, which you just set up, and then go to mute. And then on here, if I hit mute, you can see it goes down. Say I want delay just in this section, just in this section, and so on and so on. So you could delay only certain words of your song, and it'll make it sound delayed just in those sections, which could be cool effect instead of having delay all the time, which could sound like it kind of gets in the way of things. So I like to automate my delays pretty often but uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, it's just another option. And now let's say you want some reverb on your track, go to bus and select the reverb bus. And you're gonna say how much reverb do you want and just go ahead and turn it up. Uh, sometimes minus 17 is good, sometimes minus 10, depending on how much reverb you want, you could just adjust it based on whatever uh, amount you want and then set it like that. Okay, so that's how you get reverb and delay sound or that effect onto your audio track. So that's it for that. That's pretty much all I really do other than the mix bus and the master. So let's go ahead and create those. So I'm going to go with shift command N is the shortcut. If you don't want to do the shortcut, you could always just go to track new. And we're going to go with a stereo aux input. That's going to be for my mix bus. And then I'm going to also create a stereo master fader. So let's create those. My mix bus, I like to double click on it and just rename it mix bus. And then solo safe this. So hold down command, hit the solo button. So that's if you solo something out, you're still going through the mix bus. And then I want to change the color over it. I like to have red. So I'm gonna go with a bright red here. And that's just showing me that this is like going through my master process. It's where everything mixes down. So it's toward the end and I associate red with the end of my chain. And then I'm gonna go ahead to bus for the input and let's go ahead and select an empty one, bus 29 and 30, rename it, right click on it. 
and let's say mix bus. Enter. Now I want everything in my entire session to go to this mix bus. So what I have to do is change the output of everything. Because right now, all of these tracks, my reverb, my delay, my vocal tracks, my beat, they're just going to output one and two, and output one and two is my master. So it's skipping the mix bus right now and going straight to the master. So if I do anything on the mix bus, it's not gonna matter because no audio is going to it right now. So we need to route it to the mix bus. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the beat and then hold down the shift key and select down to the reverb, which is my last track. So I have all of them highlighted now. And then I'm gonna hold shift and option or there's also the alt on the same key, but shift and option, and then select the output of one of these tracks, go to the bus, and I'm still holding down shift and option, and then go to mix bus. And what that's gonna do is change all of those tracks to the mix bus on the output. That way I don't have to do it one by one, it's just a shortcut to do all of them at once. So now all my audio is gonna run through the mix bus. And this is where I do my mastering chain. The reason for doing the mastering chain on the mix bus versus the master is simply because if you do any volume automation on the overall song, you want it to be able to still have the same limiting level at all times. You don't want your volume adjustment to also affect your limiter. So if your limiter is on your master track and you do a fade out on your song like this, and right here you have drums going, all that, well, all of a sudden those drums are no longer getting limited at the same level because the volume is going into those plugins. And as you lessen the volume going into them, the limiter is no longer being hit because the threshold isn't being uh, achieved anymore and you're no longer getting that effect. So as you do volume fades or anything like that, uh, you wanna make sure that you're still getting the same settings on your limiter and all that stuff. So that's why I do my limiting here on the mix bus. So any volume changes that I do on the master are after the plugins, not before the plugins. So if you're not doing any volume automation, then it doesn't matter. You don't need a mix bus. You could just simply do all your mastering stuff on your master track and it won't matter. But if you're doing volume automations, then you wanna create a mix bus. And I just do it out of habit. I like mix bus uh, processing. So that's something I do. I like to create a mix bus and use it for that. So if it's a habit, that's another reason you could do it. All right, so that's everything. It's super simple. I don't do anything crazy with routing. It's very, very basic. You have your beat, you have your uh, audio tracks for your vocals, a delay, a reverb, any other type of effect you want, just create more aux tracks and send to them. Same exact process I showed you for the delay and the reverb. Create a mix bus if you want to use one or if you're doing volume automations, then you'll need one. And then a master out, that's it. Keep it simple. Then you can really focus on actually mixing the song, getting it to sound good. And you don't have to worry about all this crazy routing. So hopefully this helped you guys out. And again, if you guys want any templates or any mixing or courses or any of that stuff, check me out, hiphopaudioschool.com. I'll have a link here on the screen for you guys, and I'll also have a link down in my description. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.